Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about Musepa and IC1396. Musepa is a red supergiant star in Cepheus the King, and it's also known as Herschel's Garnet Star because William Herschel said that it has a very fine, deep red garnet color. Musepa is a variable star, and it's most red when it's at its brightest. It varies between magnitude 3.4 and magnitude 5.1. It's currently magnitude 4 at the time I'm filming this. It's near regular variable star, varying between those magnitudes over the course of two to two and a half years, all the way up to 12 years from what I've read. In that sense, it's similar to the variable star Mira in Cetus the Whale. Mu Sepa is about 2,800 light years away from us. Astronomers categorize stars based on their surface temperature and their color. The spectral types are O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Hot O and B stars are blue. Warm A and F stars are white or yellowish white. Yellow stars like our sun are spectral type G. And the cool K and M stars are orange and red. Mu Sepa is a spectral type M2 star. And its spectrum is used as the spectral standard by which other stars are classified. Mu Sepa is a red supergiant and it's huge, approximately 2.4 billion miles across. For comparison, our sun is 865,000 miles across. Mu Sepa is an old star, probably 10 million years old, and it's near death, so it's fusing helium into carbon and it's losing mass and it has caused it to be enveloped in a cloud of dust around the star. Mu Sepa is one of the largest known stars. It's 1,600 times that of our sun. Only a few other stars are larger than Mu Sepa, and only VV Sepa, which is larger, is visible to the naked eye. It has a surface temperature of 3,600 Kelvin, and is 100,000 times more luminous than our sun. If Mu Sepa were our sun, it would engulf the orbit of Jupiter. Since it's so old and near death, it's a supernova candidate. Very probably because it's so large, it will end its life as a black hole. Mu Sepa is at the edge of a star forming nebula, IC 1396, and it's in Cepheus the King, which is circumpolar, which means that it never sets and it stays above the horizon as viewed from mid-northern latitudes and rotates closely around the North Celestial Pole. Some astronomy books say that Cepheus and Mu Sepa are best viewed from September to November, but I say look at it whenever it's visible. And it's visible for me here in Montana at 45 degrees latitude right now. And it's a great binocular object because its deep red color shows well in binoculars. And in a telescope, it also shows its red color well. It can be paired with IC 1396, which is huge. It's at magnitude 5.6, but it has low surface brightness. So you'll probably need an O3 filter to make out the nebulosity of IC 1396. And it has a dark globule inside of it, VDB 142, that you can't see with the telescope. However, it has the multiple star system in it, a triple star system, HD 206267. Oh my goodness, here comes Katie. Katie, how are you? What are you doing here? Oh my God! Ah! I didn't think Katie watched my videos. Well, I guess I have to return this telescope to her now. Sula, what are you talking about? I've watched every one of your videos from beginning to end. In fact, I want my certificate and put a gold star on it because I watched those ones on astrophotography as well. But Sula, you're dead wrong about IC 1396. Inside of it, the globule is called IC 1396A. It's not VDB 142. And Sula, you can see it, but not with that little itty bitty 90 millimeter refractor. Sula, you need big aperture to see the globule. I saw it with my 16 inch Dobsonian. But Sula, you can keep my little 90 millimeter refractor as long as you want because you've been getting a lot of mileage out of it. You seem to enjoy it. So you keep it, Sula. Well then, I stand corrected. You can see the globule inside with a large aperture telescope. 
Katie, thank you so much for your magnanimity. It's overwhelming for letting me keep this great little telescope for a while. Let me finish this episode and then we'll go inside and have a drink. So if you can see Cepheus where you live or observe, have a look at Mu Sapphire. To find it face north, you can draw a line from the pointer stars in the Big Dipper through Polaris and that will put you at the top of Cepheus, which is not very bright, but Cepheus is shaped like a two-story house. Mu Sepha is at the entrance of the house. If you can see that, it's about five degrees southeast of Alderman, the brightest star in Cepheus. Another way to find it is to find Cygnus the Swan, also known as the Northern Cross and find the star that's the middle of the cross, that's Seder, and shoot an arrow through Seder to Deneb and keep going past a large dark patch, which is Lesion Till 3, a dark nebula. Another five degrees past that will put you at a very red star. Possibly you can see it with your naked eye, depending on how dark the skies are where you observe and what magnitude the star is at the time that you view it. But look with binoculars because, or a small telescope, the red will show well in it. I'm going to look with Katie's 90 millimeter refractor after it gets dark and also look for IC 1396. I'm just shooting for the triple star system at the center and the nebulosity around it since IC 1396A is beyond the capacity of this great little telescope, as great as it is. And you too should look at this fascinating, beautiful red supergiant, Herschel's garnet star, Mu Sepha. I'll be back after it gets dark. It's only 10.15, so it's not dark, but conditions are not very good. It's windy and there are some clouds. I put it on this go-to mount so that I could take some pictures of Mu Sepha and I see 1396, but at this point, <laughs> I'm hoping I can even see it but it won't be dark for another hour. So I'll be back in an hour to, I hope, look at Mu Sepha and I see 1396. And maybe take some pictures, <laughs> we'll see. I did look at Venus, it said its final crescent phase it was beautiful. While waiting for it to get dark, I decided to look at double stars because it doesn't need to be that dark to see double stars. So I started looking at Delta Sapphire, a double star in Cepheus. And it's a beautiful double star, but it's also a variable star. And it's famous because it's the Cepheus variable that Henrietta Swan Leavitt studied in 1912 to determine the relationship between luminosity and period to measure distances. Before that, astronomers had to use parallax, but they couldn't measure anything more than 10 light years away with parallax. So, Delta Cephi, a beautiful double star and variable star in Cepheus, another object to look at. Okay, I think it's dark enough now. It's 1130. I've got IC 1396 in my telescope. I'm starting with the 16 millimeter eyepiece because it's a very large nebula and so you don't want to magnify too much. And I can make out the uh, nebulosity around it. I can barely see the triple star system and I didn't even put the O3 filter in here, but let me see what it looks like with the O3 filter. And I looked at Mu Sepi with binoculars, uh, but I'm going to put it in the telescope because it's even redder <laughs> in the telescope. But first, let's put an O3 filter on here and see what the nebula looks like with the O3 filter. Okay, the O3 filter helped bring out the nebulosity. Um, but I, since I can see it, I like it better without the filter. And next I'm going to look at Mu Sepha. And then I'm going to try to take some pictures, uh, if, 
it stays clear in that area of the sky. Mu Sepa, Red Supergiant, and IC1396, two very nice objects for a small telescope. Even though Mu Sepa is on the edge of IC1396, I think because it's so big, I can't get both of them in at the same time. But definitely look at Mu Sepa, it's very red. Looks really good in a small telescope. And then check out IC 1396. And if you can't see the nebulosity, try an O3 filter. And it helps to go to a dark sky site as always. Okay, I've looked at Mu Sapphire and IC 1396 to my heart's content, and also Delta Sapphire. That's why I feel okay ruining my night vision with this bright light. And now I'm going to try to take some pictures. If not, I'll have to show you my sketches instead. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on Mu Sapphire, Herschel's Garnet Star, and IC 1396 and Delta Sapphire. That's the end of this presentation on Mu Sepa and IC1396. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.